<clears throat> it is thought that we cannot prove or disprove uh, that a universe is a simulation. Uh, however, a proof could lie with uh, a nominee to a physical constants. We measure our universe using units such as mass, length, uh, time, and charge. Uh, and to do that, we use physical constants such as the speed of light, electron mass, uh, gravitation constant, and so on. These units define our understanding of what means physical. For, uh, if I simulate a car using a computer CAD system, then I have to define its parameters. For example, uh, I select mass equals four tons. The number four by itself has no meaning. We have to add the dimension or unit we are measuring, uh, which is tons. And so numbers, when measuring some aspect of the physical universe, uh, such as the mass of a car, are the frequency of these units. Um, five kilograms refers to five of the unit kilogram. 12 seconds uh, refers to 12 of the unit second. The universe itself uh, does not appear to do this. It somehow knows the mass of that car is four tons. And this is what distinguishes a physical universe from a mathematical universe. And so, if a universe is a simulation, then the proof will be within our measuring system, are those physical constants. And as we will see here, this proof is not difficult to find. Um, this is because if a universe is a simulation, then it resides on a celestial hard disk. And so in the world of the programmer gods, our universe is only data. And that means the physical universe, units of mass, time and so on, are constructs from within the simulation. Seen from the inside, our universe has a lot of mass and space. Uh, but in sum, all these dimensions of our universe have to cancel each other if the total universe itself is to remain dimensionless because for the gods, our universe is only data. For the gods, there is no real universe uh, any more than a uh, universe simulation on my laptop is real. Um, for example, matter and antimatter cancel, positive and negative charges cancel. Uh, but this is easy because these are just inverse properties. Uh, for a true simulation universe, we have to show how our dimensions of mass and length and time and charge also cancel. And logically, uh, that means they cannot be independent of each other. Um, mass cannot be independent of space and time. We talk about gravity as mass somehow interacting with space-time. Uh, in a simulation, we would be looking at a mass space-time. We can consider them as separate dimensions, but they're not independent of each other. Uh, there are a set of units called the SI units. The ones that concern us here are the meter, uh, the kilogram, the second, the ampere, and temperature, uh, usually kelvins. Uh, in this table, we see some of the physical constants with their units. To test our simulation hypothesis, what we can do is assign a, a number to each unit. This gives us a means to establish and test for a relationship between the units. Here I have selected these numbers, mass is 15, time is minus 30, and so on. This now gives us the unit numbers for these physical constants. Um, we have units for mass length and so on. They are called Planck units, Planck mass, Planck time. The Planck scale is to the atom as the atom is to the entire universe. So it's a very small scale. And if this universe is a simulation, then most likely the operating system works at this Planck scale. Uh, we measure Planck mass using numbers and units. Um, Planck mass is about 22 micrograms. In a Planck scale simulation, what would be the universe version of Planck mass? The universe doesn't use numbers, so instead it would have to use an entity that is mass. If our simulation is a mathematical universe with mathematics as the programming language, uh, then we could use geometrical objects. Each attribute is then assigned its own object. Uh, in this table, we have a set of geometrical objects for each attribute. They are the geometry of two numbers, alpha, which is the fine structure constant, and this omega.
If these objects for mass, length, time and charge can fit together Lego style, then I can combine them to make electrons and planets. If an apple has mass, then that is because the apple incorporates these mass objects. Uh, the electron has mass, wavelength and charge, and so likewise the electron incorporates the objects for mass, length and charge. Uh, we can then build our universe by simply combining these objects together in different ways. Uh, these two numbers, alpha and omega, themselves have no units, uh, they're just numbers, and so our mass object is not really a mass, as we understand it. And the time object is not really time. However, if I put the mass object with other objects, such as length of time, then it will exhibit the attribute for mass in relation to those other units. Uh, there need not be any physical mass. Um, Alpha and omega have numerical values, and so, for example, we can solve the numerical value for the velocity object v. Uh, we then want to convert to our speed of light c, which is measured in meters per second. So we include a scalar, this small v. Here, c equals geometrical v times scalar v. If we want to measure in miles per second, then we change scalar v accordingly. Uh, if we meet aliens, then they will have a different V, uh, depending on their unit system. Because the scalars carry the units, we can assign to the scalars these unit numbers. Uh, in this table, we show object, scalar, and unit number. Uh, this is where it becomes interesting because we can now find combinations where the scalars cancel. Here we combine scalars alpha A, L, and T in a ratio where they cancel. There are no dimensions, uh, so units equals 1. This means that if we know the values for scalars A and L, then we know the value for scalar T. And from T and L, we know K, and so on. And so we only need two scalars. Uh, this can be seen in Table 5, where we are using only the scalars R and V. This means that if I know any two constants, uh, for example, if I know the value for the speed of light, then I know the velocity scalar v, and if I know the value for Planck mass, then I know the mass scalar k. And then from this v and k, I can calculate the scalars for length, time, and charge. Uh, and then by including alpha and omega, and these both have constant values, uh, I will be able to calculate all the physical constants that use units. And so, to calculate any dimension constant, such as the gravitation constant g, uh, I need only four numbers, alpha, omega, and any two scalars. Uh, but I can do even better. If we combine our physical constants in those combinations where the scalars cancel, then we can solve everything. And we are only using those two fixed constants, alpha and omega, because the scalars have gone. And this will work for any system of units. The answers will always be the same, whether using alien or human units. And this is also a good test of our geometrical Planck units. In Table 7 are listed combinations where the units and scalars have cancelled. We solve uh, using quadrata values in column 1 and compare with our objects in column 2. The least known constants uh, give the worst results. The best known known to the highest precision, give the best results, uh, and this is not surprising. We note also the appearance of a geometrical base 15 for all dimensionless combinations, so these are not random. There is an underlying pattern emergency, emerging. In Table 8, uh, we saw individual constants using the four numbers alpha, omega, and two scalars, and compare our calculated values with codata. Again, our results, uh, despite the simplicity of our geometrical objects, are consistent. I am using Codata 214 as recently four constants were assigned exact values by committee. This is problemat problematic here, as once two constants are assigned values, all the other constants are determined by default. We cannot assign values to more than two constants. Uh, 
Here we define combinations that reduce to the fine structure constant alpha, the first being this famous formula. What this formula shows is that alpha equals alpha, which is perhaps not surprising, uh, but unfortunately also not of much practical use. What we do is simply replace each constant with its object equivalent and then solve. Units and scalars cancel, uh, leaving behind alpha. We can also construct the electron from these Planck objects. First, we combine objects for charge and our length to form a magnetic monopole, AL. We then combine these with a time object, T. The units and scalars cancel, and we are left with a dimensionless geometrical object, Fe. We can then combine this electron formula Fe with mass, length, and charge objects to obtain the parameters for the electron. Uh, we can confirm accuracy also with the Rydberg constant, whose precision is known to around 12 decimal places. This formula Fe is the electron. What it does is dictate the frequency of the Planck objects uh, to get what we define as electron mass, wavelength, and charge. However, Fe is a dimensionless geometrical formula. There is no physical electron, only this mathematical electron. Uh, and this is why physics has never found the electron, only its parameters. There are four constants known with extreme precision. We first convert these into geometrical forms and then use them to solve our least precise constants. Uh, in this example on the left, we convert Planck's constant h to a geometrical formula. And on the right, we find a combination of our four constants, which give the same formula. We can then solve h using these four constants. Table 10 shows the constants with their solutions in terms of these four constants. Uh, here is a table of constants in ascending order according to the unit number. The table is constructed from three geometries, x, y, and i. i uses this geometrical base 15 we saw earlier, and so is dimensionless. x and y are also dimensionless, but are using scalars, so the programmer is using some geometrical tricks. Um, these are not complex, uh, but there is nothing comparable in our models of the universe, nor is the logic behind this approach evident. We have nothing similar. And so it would appear to be based on a mathematical theory which is unknown to us. Uh, as such, this could be considered as our first evidence of a non-human intelligence, a program of God. Um, the above can be found on this wiki site. I'll put the links below. The tables are too big for a YouTube. Um, wiki is convenient because of its linking structure.